It's hard to believe, but it's been almost seven years since the Google Pixel 2 was released. Unfortunately, it stopped receiving major Android updates after Android 11, which is disappointing, especially since the Pixel 2 is equipped with solid hardware like the Snapdragon 835 and 4GB of RAM, more than capable of handling newer updates, but Google decided to cut it off. The good news, though, is that the custom ROM developer community has stepped in to fill the gap. Thanks to the developers at Pixel Builds, we now have a way to get Android 14 on these older devices. In this video, I'll guide you through the steps to bypass Google's limitations and install Android 14 on your Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL. Make sure to watch until the end, so you don't miss any important details in this step-by-step -step guide. Before we dive in, I want to mention that in this video, I'll be using a Pixel 3 for the installation process. But don't worry, the steps are almost identical for the Pixel 2, which is why I'm using it as an example. So stick around and follow along. We'll be installing the latest Pixel Builds custom ROM, which to my surprise works incredibly well. It's stable, fast, and comes packed with all those Android 14 features, like the circle to search tool for quick searches, an AI image generator that creates stunning, unique images, and the new lock screen customization options. Honestly, I've been blown away by the quality of the images this ROM produces, even outperforming the Pixel 6 in some cases. The camera performance has improved so much that when comparing it side by side with the Pixel 6, the Pixel 3's photos show more detail, especially when zoomed in up to 7x. This trend continues with video, where the Pixel 3 footage is impressively sharper. Gameplay on this ROM is also solid. PUBG runs smoothly, and while the 60Hz display might not show a huge difference in everyday use, the overall performance is definitely better than the stock ROM. I also ran Geekbench tests, and the scores clearly show an improvement. Some of the standout features in this ROM include Face Unlock, which as you can see in this test works like a charm. There's also Magic Eraser in the Photos app, significant improvements in camera quality and one of my personal favorites, unlimited photo backup on Google Photos. Now, before we dive into the installation process, make sure to back up your data because this process will wipe your device. These instructions only work if you follow them exactly, so take your time with each step. Also, ensure your device is running the latest official stock firmware. I've already published a video on how to revert back to the official ROM, so if you ever want to go back to stock, I've got you covered. Let's start with the prerequisites. First thing, you'll need the latest version of Google's platform tools for ADB and Fastboot installed on your PC. Secondly, make sure Google ADB drivers are installed on your computer. Additionally, ensure you have the latest factory images installed. You'll also need the latest Pixel Builds ROM for your Pixel 3. I've put all the download links in the description, so check that out before you proceed. Let's first enable OEM unlocking in developer options. For that, go to Settings, then About Phone, and tap Build Number seven times until you see the you are now a developer message. Then go back to settings, find system, then developer options, and enable OEM unlocking and USB debugging. Connect your Pixel to your computer using a USB-C cable. You might see a prompt asking to allow USB debugging. Make sure to allow it. Now head over to the Pixel Builds website and download the latest build for your Pixel model, along with the boot file. Save all these files to your computer. Now, pay attention. I'm guessing most of you already have the ADB tools and Android OEM drivers set up on your devices, but I know some of you might need a hand with that. So, if you're all set up, feel free to skip ahead to the next part of the video. But if you need help with installing ADB tools and OEM Android drivers, stick around and follow these steps. Install ADB and Fastboot. These are part of the Android SDK platform tools. Head over to the official Android developer website. I've put the link in the description below. Once you're on the page, download the platform tools package for your operating system, Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Step two. Once the download is complete, locate the zip file in your downloads folder and extract it to a convenient location on your computer, like your drive C or a dedicated folder. 
Step 3. Setting up ADB and Fastboot. Now that we have the platform tools extracted, let's make sure your computer can use them. For Windows users, this involves adding the platform tools folder to your system's path environment variable. For macOS and Linux users, it's a bit simpler. For Windows, open the start menu, search for environment variables and select edit the system environment variables. In the system properties window, click on environment variables. In the environment variables window, find the path variable under system variables and click edit. Click new and paste the path to your platform tools folder. It should look something like this. Click OK on all windows to close them. Now for macOS and Linux, pause this video here and just follow these steps. Step 4. Install the OEM USB drivers. This step is crucial for your computer to properly recognize your Pixel device. If you're on Windows, download the Google USB driver from the Android developer website. Extract the downloaded file, then open Device Manager on your computer. Find your Pixel device under Other Devices or Portable Devices. Right-click on it, choose Update Driver, and browse to the folder where you extracted the USB driver. If you're on macOS or Linux, you generally don't need to install additional drivers. Great, let's continue. Move all these downloaded files into the Platform Tools folder of ADB and to make things easier, rename them to something simple. This will save you from typing long names later on. Next, right-click inside the Platform Tools folder and select Open in Terminal. Type ADB Devices and press Enter. If you see a connected device listed, you're all set for the next steps. Then type ADB D Reboot Bootloader and press Enter to boot your device into fastboot mode. Once in fastboot mode, confirm your phone is connected by typing fastboot devices in the command window. Next, type the following command to unlock the bootloader. Fastboot flashing unlock. Follow the instructions on your phone using the volume and power keys to unlock the bootloader. Your device will reboot into fastboot mode again. And once the status changes to unlocked, you're one step closer to flashing Android 14. Now let's flash the recovery file. Type fastboot flashboot boot.img in the terminal. Then type fastboot flash dtbo dtbo dot img and press enter. After that, type adb sideload product partition taman extended dot zip and press enter. Great. Now it's time to flash the Pixel Build's ROM onto your device. Using the power and volume keys on your phone, boot into recovery mode. Once in recovery, select Factory Reset, then Format Data Factory Reset, and continue with the formatting process. This will remove encryption and delete all files stored in internal storage. Return to the main menu, select Apply Update, then Apply from ADB to begin sideloading. In the terminal, type this command to start flashing the Pixel Builds custom ROM, ADB Sideload Pixel Builds .zip. The ROM will start flashing, and the process should be done in a few minutes. While you're waiting, don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you find it helpful. I'll be posting more custom ROMs for Google Pixel devices, so stay tuned. Once the flashing process is complete, choose Reboot to System. Your device will now boot into Pixel Build's Android 14 ROM. The first boot might take a little longer than usual, so don't worry if it seems to take its time. And there you have it. Your Pixel is now running Android 14. Enjoy the new features and customization options. If you run into any issues or have questions, drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to share your experience and report any issues so others can stay informed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.